Welcome to our continuing series, Fine Poetry. Today, the poetry of Derek Walcott, Part 2. Forest of Europe. The last leaves fell like notes from a piano and left their ovals echoing in the ear. With gawky music stands, the forest looks like an empty orchestra, its lines ruled on these scattered manuscripts of snow. The inlaid copper laurel of an oak shines through the brown-bricked glass above your head, as bright as whiskey, while the wintry breath of lines from Mandelstam, which you recite, uncoils as visibly as cigarette smoke. The rustling of ruble notes by the lemon neva. Under your exile's tongue, crisp under heel, the gutturals crackle like decaying leaves. The phrase from Mandelstam circles with light in a brown room in barren Oklahoma. There is a gulag archipelago under this ice where the salt mineral spring of the long trail of tears runnels these plains as hard and open as a herdsman's face sun cracked and stubbled with unshaven snow growing in whispers from the writers congress the snow circles like cossacks round the corpse of a tired Choctaw till it is a blizzard of treaties and white papers as we lose sight of the single human through the cause. So every spring these branches load their shelves like libraries with newly published leaves till waste recycles them, paper to snow, but at zero of suffering, one mind lasts like this oak with a few brazen leaves. As the train passed the forest's tortured icons, the flows clanging like freight yards, then the spires of frozen tears, the station's screeching steam, he drew them in a single winter's breath whose freezing consonants turned into stone. He saw the poetry in forlorn stations, under clouds vast as Asia, through districts that could gulp Oklahoma like a grape. Not these tree-shaded prairie halts, but space so desolate it mocked destinations. Who is that dark child on the parapets of Europe, watching the evening river mint its sovereigns, stamped with power, not with poets? The Thames and the Neva, rustling like banknotes then, black on gold. The Hudson's silhouettes? From frozen Neva to the Hudson, pours under the airport domes, the echoing stations, the tributary of emigrants whose exile has made as classless as the common cold, citizens of a language that is now yours. And every February, every last autumn, you write far from the threshing harvesters, folding wheat like a girl plaiting her hair, far from Russia's canals quivering with sunstroke, a man living with English in one room. The tourist archipelagos of my south are prisons too, corruptible, and though there is no harder prison than writing verse, what's poetry if it is worth its soul? but a phrase men can pass from hand to mouth. From hand to mouth, across the centuries, 
the bread that lasts when systems have decayed, when, in his forest of barbed wire branches, a prisoner circles, chewing the one phrase whose music will last longer than the leaves, whose condensation is the marble sweat of angels' foreheads, which will never dry till Borealis shuts the peacock lights of its slow fan from L.A. to Archangel, and memory needs nothing to repeat. Frightened and starved with divine fever, Ossip Mandelstam shook, and every metaphor shuddered him with ague, each vowel heavier than a boundary stone, to the rustling of ruble notes by the lemon nera. But now that fever is a fire whose glow warms our hands, Joseph, as we grunt like primates, exchanging gutturals in this wintry cave of a brown cottage, while in drifts outside, mastodons force their systems through the snow.